Dr. Volan back here with you for another session of Microbiology Boot Camp. Our topic today is going to be Bacillus cereus, and there is not a lot of information to know about this one. Uh, the most important things to know about this one are the classification, the names of the two toxins, and the sole disease process that this causes, which is gastroenteritis. Okay, so um, I'm gonna. This is gonna be really short talk. Uh, I I don't anticipate getting very complicated questions on this one. Um, there's just a few buzzwords that you need to know. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. I have the link below in the description of the video, or you can click on the I button in the upper right hand corner. If you consider chipping in a dollar a month, a little bit goes a long way to help offset the cost of these videos. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe to my channel, or you can patronize my advertisers by clicking on the ads and seeing what they have to say. All of that is very much appreciated. So thank you very much in advance. You should be familiar with the constituents of the gram-positive and gram-negative cell walls. Uh, not very important clinically for the most part, but very highly testable for step one. So if you're not familiar with all of these things, go back and watch my general characteristics of gram-positive bacteria video. I familiarize you with all of these components of the gram-positive cell wall. And then this is how gram staining works. You should be familiar with that process as well. So we'll run through our classification on the algorithm. We'll talk about the characteristics of B-serious. Again, like I said, not a lot of information you need to know. Uh, we'll talk about the one disease that this causes, which is really just an inconvenience rather than a disease per se. And then we'll finish with the story. So here's our algorithm, blowing up the gram-positive bacilli here. We're talking about non-anaerobes. Um, now you'll hear some of these described as, as facultative anaerobes. Some of the bacillus species are, in fact, true aerobes. Some are obligate ana or sorry, some are facultative anaerobes. Uh, but uh, a lot of times they'll be described to you as aerobic under certain conditions and facultative anaerobes under other conditions. So it's not super important to know that. Just know that they're not obligate anaerobes, and you should be good to go in that sense. So I put the bare bones minimum of things that you need to know for each of these bacteria. So if you know this, you're going to get most of your questions right, but I go into enough detail on these videos that if you know all this stuff, you're going to get all your questions right on the exam. So there's a gram-positive bacilli. It's been described as aerobic under certain conditions and facultatively anaerobic under other conditions but it is not an obligate anaerobe. That's your clostridium species. So if you hear gram-positive bacilli and obligate anaerobe, uh, then you know you're dealing with clostridium. It is spore-forming, which is important as far as its ability to be implicated in food poisoning. Um, it's modal, so you can see here it's got flagella. Uh, it's catalase-positive and beta-hemolytic, and then it's got two important exotoxins. Uh, so it's got serialide and enterotoxin. Those are both different, but they both cause food poisoning. Our characteristics are that it can form spores. Uh, you should keep in mind the term dipicolinic acid, which is a chemical constituent of endospores. So that may be thrown at you on the exam, so keep that in mind. Uh, it's got flagella for motility. I'm not sure how important that motility is, though, for, uh, for B. serious. The toxins are enterotoxin and serialide. Enterotoxin is implicated in diarrhea. Serialide is implicated in vomiting, and I'll go into a little greater detail uh, in that in, in a little bit. Uh, there are other toxins from B. serious, but they're not relevant for the exams. Now, notice that when you look at this under the microscope, it doesn't look all that much different from Bacillus anthracis in that it forms these sort of chains here. 
Um, so you're not going to be asked to distinguish between the two just by looking under a microscope. Obviously, the syndromes that it causes are extremely different. You're not going to be doing cultures for most patients with bacillus serious food poisoning. You're going to be managing that supportively. Uh, but just know that it, it is the same genus, so you're going to run into a lot of similar features. And then notice that it's got flagellum here and that it's beta hemolytic. Okay, so disease caused by bacillus cereus, there's really just one, and that's bacillus cereus food poisoning. Now there's one thing that makes bacillus cereus food poisoning stand out a little bit from the other ones, and that's that vomiting is a prominent feature. And the reason is because cerealide is a, an amidotoxin. It causes vomiting, and it causes vomiting because it interacts with serotonin receptors in the nucleus tractus solitarius, and that's your, your vomiting zone in your brain. And, and so that's, that's the way it works. So it directly triggers vomiting. But because there's an enterotoxin too, it frequently causes diarrhea. Now typically with bacillus serious food poisoning, it's classically associated with reheated rice. Uh, you reheat the rice, the spores germinate, and, uh, and then you form toxins, and then you ingest the toxins. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but the vomiting will typically happen within a few hours after consuming the food, and then the diarrhea, if it happens, will come quite a few hours after that, talking 8 to 12 hours after, after ingesting the food. So useful to know that it could just be nausea and vomiting, or it could just be diarrhea, or it could be both. But vomiting is very, very prominent in most cases of bacillus serious food poisoning, so know that there are a lot of other food poisonings that just cause diarrhea. And important to know that this is a non-bloody diarrhea. So if you've got bloody diarrhea, you are not dealing with B-serious, you're dealing with something like Shigella or EHEC or something like that. So important to know the nature of the diarrhea. Treatment, there is none. You just let it pass, literally. Uh, you, don't, you don't treat this. Just supportive management, fluids, um, obviously if there's vomiting, you really want to make sure that your, your patients are taking Pedialyte, Gatorade, etc. Our story today takes place at the City Rice Chinese Restaurant. Think City Rice, Sirius, Bacillus Sirius. And the symbol for our Chinese restaurant here is a dragon. And a dragon is kind of like a snake, and the snake has been our recurrent symbol for gram-positive rods. So this is a dragon here. I just figured it's more uh, more fitting for a Chinese restaurant. So a gram-positive aerobic rod. And notice that the dragon has a tail. And the tail will help you remember that this is a flagellated organism. So here comes our waitress here. And our waitress has a cat. And that's because Bacillus cereus is a catalase positive organism. And also notice that the waitress and the patron both have blue bows. It's not just blue, it's a nice color of blue known as cerulean. And that is to help you remember that one of the toxins from Bacillus cereus is cerealide. That is the imidogenic toxin that causes vomiting. Another toxin is seen uh, by this sign here that says enter here for enterotoxin, enterotoxin, and that causes the diarrhea, which is a non-bloody, watery diarrhea that typically occurs about 12 hours after ingesting the offending food, whereas vomiting from cerealide occurs within a few hours. Notice that our patron is eating noodles, pasta, which can be associated with, with bacillus serious food poisoning, but more importantly, rice. So bacillus serious food poisoning is associated with reheated rice. And what else is good with Chinese food than peanut sauce? I love peanut sauce, although that maybe that's more Thai food. But peanuts and nuts, in general, are our symbol for spore-forming bacteria. So Bacillus cereus is spore-forming, like, just like Bacillus anthracis, just like the Clostridium species, spore-forming bacteria. And what's for dessert? Ooh, yum. I love chocolate fondue. Well, maybe not this chocolate fondue, because this chocolate fondue is diarrhea. 
This is diarrhea fondue. That doesn't sound like really good for dessert, right? So chocolate fondue fountain to help you remember that uh, Bacillus cereus food poisoning causes diarrhea, a non-bloody watery diarrhea. And I don't blame this patron for throwing up after he left this restaurant with all this contaminated food and seeing this diarrhea fountain here, he's throwing up because Bacillus serious food poisoning is associated with vomiting and nausea within a few hours after ingesting the offending food.